For my first project today, I have this shutter, which I actually found on the side of the road. I have four sets of them and I've slowly been working away at using them in my projects, but I just sanded it down, gave it a nice fresh coat of spray paint. And then I'm taking this burlap fabric that I have on hand, cutting it down to the length that I want it to be to cover the bottom half of my shutter. Then I'm going to just rip out a few of the threads from the burlap fabric. I love this look for the fall. It adds just that perfect little rustic touch. Next, we're heading over to the printer. I found these pumpkins and spelled out harvest on my Cricut, but I want to just print it out on my printer using this Hippo transfer paper. Hippo is kind enough to sponsor today's video. I am super excited to be working with them. Now, I know that this paper says that it is for dark fabrics, but I did put it to the test. I didn't show it in this video, but I did put it to the test with white fabric as well, and you can use it on both dark and white fabrics. Another thing that I thought was really cool about this paper is you can actually have your kids draw a picture or you could even paint something yourself and you can then transfer it on to a t-shirt or a bag or whatever you want to add it to so that you can have that image forever. I thought this was really awesome and I definitely want to try this out. So once I pulled my image from Cricut that I found into my Word document then i want to print it out and you want to go into your print properties here and you want to make sure that you are selecting photo paper and high gloss and make sure that you have it set to color for the best quality you also want to make sure you print on the white side of the paper and not on the grid side which is the backing you will end up peeling off Next, I'm going to cut out my image that I printed out. Now you can use a Cricut if you have one with this paper. I chose not to. I wanted to cut out, well actually I didn't really know how I could get this image then back into my Cricut. I don't know how to print something like this, but anyways, that's a whole nother story. I wanted to cut out each individual letter because I really wanted that burlap fabric to show through underneath and I didn't want to have like any white border around it. So this certainly was a little bit time consuming, but if you wanted to cut out an image on your Cricut, you certainly could. Now to transfer or iron the letters down onto my burlap. If you have an easy press or a heat press or anything like that, it would work just the same. I don't have any of those things, so I'm just going to be using my good old fashioned iron here. So I place my letters down where I want them to go. I did this one by one so that I could have more control over the placement. Then I laid down the I think it's, I forget what it's called, but it's basically wax paper that comes in your little package from Hippo. And then you want to heat up the paper for about two minutes. And then I found what was best was to let the wax paper cool down slightly before peeling it off. And that worked out really well. So next I'm just going to lay down my pumpkins and do the same exact thing. I really love the way that this image transferred onto the burlap. You can really see that texture coming through underneath as if this were painted right onto the fabric and I love it. So now I'm going to take my burlap and wrap it around the bottom of my shutter using my finger protector because that hot glue will come right through all of those little holes in your burlap. Then I added some of this farmhouse ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree to both the top and the bottom of my burlap, leaving a little bit of the burlap on either end of it, added in some dried florals, stuck it on my front porch, and this is part of my fall decor. If you are interested in purchasing the Hippo heat transfer paper, I will leave a link in my description box. Hippo is giving you guys a 40% coupon code and it is actually a really reasonable price to begin with, especially if you don't have a Cricut and you want to get that same look. For this project, I'm taking some birch wood logs. I picked up a whole big box full of these for $5 at a garage sale, and I'm gonna cut them down into wood slices. Using my table saw here so that they are all the same thickness, 
I used one slightly larger log, one thinner log. And for the larger one, my saw blade was not quite tall enough. So I did have to go in with my miter box and just finish cutting it down a little bit so that I would get that perfect wood slice piece. And for this project, we're going to be using the Hippo Water Slide Decal Paper. And again, you only need your printer for this. You can use a Cricut if you have one, but it is not necessary. And I'm going to go to pixabay.com to find some images here. Pixabay has thousands of free downloadable images. At the top of their site, there are images that you can pay for, but if you scroll down, everything here is free. So I found some autumn leaves that I liked, and you can click on the free download. A pop-up will appear that asks you what size you want to download your image, and then you can download it for free. Super easy, and there are tons of great options on here for any style. After you print your image, you want to spray it three times with a clear sealer, letting it dry for 10 minutes in between each coat. So once I had my leaves printed out, I also printed out the word fall and I cut out each of my letters individually, just like I had done with my harvest word. And I wanted to add everything to these wood slices, just the raw wood slices. Now the water slide decal paper does not say that it will work with wood, but I did want to give it a try. It really didn't adhere to the wood really well. I wanted to give it a fair shot. So I did add all of my four fall letters onto four of the wood slices. And then I started to let it dry, but I could tell pretty much right away that it just wasn't going to stick. So this part wasn't going to work out. And I ended up having to take my white chalk paint, paint on a little circle so that the water slide decal paper would have something to adhere to. Once I had painted my wood slices, the letters just stuck so much better. So I am using slightly warmer water here and you wanna make sure that you also add water to the surface of your project, just so that that water slide decal is going to really nicely slide off of the paper backing. And I found that if you let it sit for too long in the water, it starts to come away from that paper backing, but you really do want it to stay attached. That way, when you go to add it to your project, it is going to just slide right off the paper and stay intact exactly how it was, hence the name water slide decal. And I found about 10 to 15 seconds worked out perfectly. Next, we're going to drill some holes in the top of our wood slices since we are making a garland. So I put two in the top of each of my wood rounds. Now taking some two millimeter macrame cord, I'm just going to string up all of my wood rounds. I did take a few 12 millimeter beads and added them to the garland between my wood rounds as well. And that was it for this project. I thought these water slide decals were so much fun to work with and so budget friendly to get that Cricut or professional look from your projects. For this project, I'm taking two of these orange ceramic pumpkins that I found at the Dollar Tree and I'm painting one of them with my moss green color and then the second one is going to be in the maize green color because those are the colors that I'm going with in my home for this fall season. Each pumpkin got two coats of paint and once that was all finished, I added in some of this DIY dark wax. This is the first time I've used this product and I absolutely love it. It just added so much depth and dimension to these pumpkins. I started out by adding it just in between all of the grooves and I thought that looked amazing, but I wanted the yellow to be a little bit more of like, it was a little too bright for me. I wanted it to be a little bit more of a mustardy color. So I added the dark wax on top and just started giving it kind of like lines and shapes. And I love the way these turned out. They look so good. I also just painted the stems of them with my truffle brown paint. 
Now to add on our decal, I just printed out the words Jones and Patch on the water slide decals and I wet the surface of my pumpkin with the water, stuck my decal in the warm water for about 15 seconds and then I'm going to use that backer so that I know where I want to place it and then just slide the paper right out and it works so well. On this surface, you are able to kind of manipulate it and move it around a little bit. If you just get your finger wet and you just rub it a little bit very gently, you can move it if you don't have it exactly where you want. You do have a little bit of working time. And one thing I did not mention on the wood rounds, after you place your decal, you want to take a soft cloth or a tissue, something to blot off the excess water, and that will also help smooth out any of the wrinkles that might have gotten onto your water slide decal. I thought this product was just so much fun to work with. I actually saw it. Sandra from the Schwowen's Nest use this before the company had even reached out to me and I thought it looked like such a fun thing to work with and I am so glad I got the chance to work with them. But that was it for this one and I love the way this turns out. I know I keep saying that for this one but I think it is just so cute. These last two projects are super quick and super easy. So for this next one, I'm taking a mug. I got this from the Dollar Tree. In hindsight, I probably should have used a white mug. It would have turned out a little bit more vibrant, but I still love the way it turned out. And I'm just taking a tea towel just to keep it from rolling while I'm trying to apply my decal to it. And I printed out one little set of pumpkins. This was an image that was on Cricut Design Space. And again, I'm going to soak it in my water for about 15 seconds wet the surface of my coffee mug and then slide my decal right off into place where I want it to be. The one pumpkin on here was a light gray so with the dark gray coffee mug it really blended in which is why I think I should have gone with a lighter color it would have made it pop a little bit more. And then for the second side I printed out morning pumpkin which was also a design from Cricut that I just pulled right out of design space and printed it out on the hippo water decal transfer paper and again I am just going to slide it right on to my mug and then here's where you can really see if you get some wrinkles in there you have some working time to play around with it so you can see that here it's really easy to just slide it around and move it around until you are happy with the position and then just take your tissue or your soft cloth and blot out any of the extra wrinkles and get any of that excess water off. It is super, super simple and I love the way this little mug turned out. I did end up adding two coats of the dishwasher safe Mod Podge on top of this after it dried. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to use this or just set it around for decor, but either way, it should be safe. And for the final project today, I am taking this tea towel that I got from Dollar General. It did come in a two pack. And then I'm just going to print out some of these leaves. I found these all on pixabay.com printed them out on the heat transfer paper and you're going to see me make a mistake here. I completely forgot to remove that grid backer and I started ironing it down and realized pretty quickly that that wasn't working out and it was not sticking down to my tea towel like it should have. So once I realized, I just ended up peeling those right off of the wax paper. They came off pretty easily, but I then did have to reprint and recut out all of, well, just those three leaves that I had messed up. And this time we are going to actually remove the backer before I start ironing them down. I do have to say, I think this is my least favorite project from today, which is why it is at the end 
only because I don't love the colors of the leaves that I chose. I was really going for a more like neutral boho type of look for this one, but I don't think that the colors printed the way that they looked on my computer screen, and I don't think that has anything to do with the heat transfer paper. I think that had more to do with the way something looks on a computer screen compared to how it prints out in real life. I was going for more of like those terracotta colors and I just don't think I achieved that. But either way, this is a super simple project and super effective to add that fall touch to your kitchen. And there are just thousands of different images out there you can choose from to spruce up some tea towels or kitchen towels in your home. Check out my description box for that 40% off coupon code that Hippo is offering to my viewers. That will be good until the end of September. That's all I got for you today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you in the next one.